So imagine this, right? You're ready to go to the store or go to your local car meet or go to work. You're getting in your car, all's good. How annoying is that? And then you want to take a short drive, just, just a real quick drive around the parking lot with your seatbelt off. Well, that's not annoying at all, is it? No, nah, that's fine. Just from one parking spot to the next, you know. But that's okay, because when you shut your car off, it's not like you gotta listen to it again. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that. So don't be scared. You're gonna have to pull some of your dash apart here, but you're not really gonna damage anything if you're careful and it's the most rewarding thing you can do, I swear on it. So all we're gonna need for this install is a Phillips head screwdriver. Really, that's it. And I will get a stubby one, something short, because we're gonna have to get two screws out from under here. After that, we're good to go. So first step here, go ahead and locate two. They're either 10 millimeters or Phillips heads, whichever. They're not in there very tight, so I'm gonna use the Phillips head. Once you get on it, go ahead, loosen it right up. Now, I know you may not be able to see exactly in the video where these are, but once you get into your own car, they are definitely there and will be very easy to find. Get them out of here. What I like to do is sit them in the shift boot so that way I don't lose them if you have like a magnetic tool tray or something. If you lose these, it, you might get vibrations and stuff and, uh, you know, your dash won't seat together properly. So sit them somewhere where you're not going to lose them. This top soft touch piece right here, just go ahead and pop straight up on that. Now it's gonna be scary, but it will pop up and then just sit that aside somewhere. I'm gonna face it this way so it don't scratch the dash or anything. So guys, I'm sorry I did lie to you when I originally said you only need one tool, being the Phillips head. I would also recommend a plastic pry tool that's gonna help get your dash apart. Uh, so next, just go ahead and pop this out. It's literally just some pop clips in the back, super easy. You're gonna see two silver Phillips head screws on the top. We're gonna pop these out. Again, not in there very tight. All the interior bolts and screws are usually somewhat loose. They're not on very tight, so it's not hard to get them off. Once you have those out, put those with your other bolts. Now. This is the tricky part. It's gonna take just a little bit of finessing. For some reason, Subaru made it. Maybe it's to help with vibration or something of that nature because like the WRXs and stuff, as they get older, they really vibrate bad. So uh, maybe it's for that. But anyways, all the dash pieces here are kind of like built around each other. This little plastic trim around the vents, we can go ahead and kind of grab with our finger and pull this back. And then that's gonna sort of pop out a little bit. You don't need to pull it out the whole way. And then we're gonna kind of grab here on this piece and pull back, do the same thing on this side. So now we've pulled this section away from the screen, grab the bottom and pull out a little bit. That's gonna break this loose, which is why we took that off. We don't need to take this off. We're gonna just let it hang there. Same with this vent and all this, we can just pull it back. Same thing on this side. Just pull back at the vent area and pull this main frame back. Now that we've done that, we can grab onto our digital cluster and pull outwards towards us. So we're just gonna kind of pull up on this. Again, we're just kind of slowly, oops, slowly finessing this out. We don't wanna break anything. So there we go. Now that the screen is out, there's gonna be two plugs underneath and I'll try and get the camera. Um, hopefully you can see those two plugs. This one over here, all we gotta do is grab and pinch and pull it out. And then we can actually spin this around if we have to, to get to the backside where you'll see a little tab that you'll push in on and pull it out. Now we can remove this from the vehicle to work on it. So now that we have this out of the vehicle, there's just gonna be three Phillips head screws holding in this little speaker back here. And this makes it nice because we don't have to take out anything that is protecting our dash. We're not gonna scratch anything up. We're not gonna damage anything. This is super easy, so you don't have to worry about breaking any seals and getting dust or dirt or moisture or anything inside 
the cluster itself. Again, it's just these three Phillips head screws. Now this speaker is literally, take a little flat head or something and pry it up. Right there it is. That is the culprit. That's what's making your life miserable. Down inside here, we just have a little clip. We can just go ahead and pinch that and it comes right out. That is the speaker. So once you have it unplugged, you can do a couple things. You can just leave this plug out and put it inside here and button it back up. If you're not keen on doing that because you may get rattles, you could maybe take this plug, you know, and route it up and around so that there's not a lot of wires sticking out and you can put it back in like that. Or if you're feeling frisky, you can just rip these wires out, cut them off, do whatever you want. Um, either way, it's not going to make a difference, but just in case we ever sell this thing, go back to stock or whatever, and for some reason need that, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to kind of tuck it down here, and I'm going to put a little piece of painter's tape on it to hold it in place. Just going to put a little piece of this on there just to hold it in place so it doesn't vibrate. All right, and now we're going to reinstall our three screws. We can slap this thing back in the car. Now to put this thing back in, we're just gonna redo the process that we did to get it out in reverse. If we were successful, I should be able to hit the start button and we won't hear the beep. I turned on the wipers and everything else in the process, but start up the car. We have no warning lights. All that it's telling us is that the door's open and the seat belt's not on. Turn it off, no noise, everything's good. That's how you erase your seatbelt thing. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. That's gonna be it for today's video. You know, hopefully we're saving some people's eardrums from listening to that every time they get in and out of their car. And that's all that matters. So hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.